Have you ever been watching a movie that includes some science or maths and this happens? <laughs> that's not that hard. Well, that's wrong. That's definitely not how that works. That's not that difficult. Oh my god, just show me the equation so I can show off. Today we're looking at some of the most interesting maths in popular movies, their inaccuracies, and the proofs behind them. Let's start with one of the most famous mathematical movies, and one of my personal favourites, the 1997 film Good Will Hunting. Good Will Hunting follows the story of Will Hunting, a janitor at Harvard University who impresses some professors by solving some previously unsolved problems on the public blackboards. Here is a recreation of that scene. Sorry. Hey, what are you doing? That's people's work. You can't graffiti here. Sorry. Don't you walk away from me. Hey, fuck you. Oh, you're a clever one. What's your name? So, of course, the question on everyone's minds is what was the problem on the board? No? Just me? Well, anyway, the problem concerns homeomorphically irreducible trees of size n equals 10. Sound complicated? It's actually something you could probably do at home. By irreducible, we mean that the tree can't have a cycle or essentially have a point B irrelevant because it's just part of a line. By homeomorphic, we mean that two trees are homeomorphically identical if they could be made to look the same by simply moving around some of the arms. By n equals 10, we mean that we must have 10 points connected by lines. Here are two of them. Can you find them all? This next movie is less accurate. If you were a person alive in 2014, then you probably saw the movie or read the book The Fault in Our Stars, which follows Hazel Grace Lancaster and Augustus Waters who meet in a teen cancer support group. The particular quote I take issue with is this. There's an infinite set of numbers between zero and one. There's 0.1, 0.12, 0.112, 0.1112, 0.1112, 0.1112, 0.1112, 0.1112, 0.1112, 0.1112, 0.1112, 0.1112, 0.1112, 0.1112, 0.1112, 0.1112, 0.1112
In particular, it follows his partnership with G.H. Hardy at the University of Cambridge between 1914 and 1919. The main proof in the film is the hardy ramanujan asymptotic partition formula, which is able to indicate roughly what the partition number is of any given integer. P of 4 is equal to 5. Now what this means is there are five ways of adding up the number 4. You have 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, 3 plus 1, 2 plus 1 plus 1, 2 plus 2, and 4. Sounds simple enough, but when you raise it to the P of 100, there are 204, 226 combinations. The formula that is described takes the following form, and was revolutionary because so many mathematicians at the time believed that there was no such formula and that partitions would always have to be done by hand. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for. Get me the eigenvector! Got a lot of inspiration, so we'll just do one last sim before we pack it in for the night. Get me a Mobius strip inverted. Give me the eigenvalue of that particle factoring in spectral decomp. It doesn't matter if it doesn't pan out. If you were like me, and sitting in the cinema with a bunch of other math students when watching the 2019 film Avengers Endgame, then you could have practically heard the eye roll when this scene came up. Finding the eigenvector of an inverted Mobius strip? That's ridiculous. And if you're a pure mathematician, it is. But Tony Stark isn't a pure mathematician, he's an engineer. And he's not doing pure maths, he's doing quantum physics. What he's doing here is working out the energy decomposition of a quantum particle when restricted to a Mobius strip. It's actually nothing to do with the things you're probably thinking of, like matrices and characteristic polynomials. That was what we were all thinking of, right? What he's calculating is the path that the particle will take over time, and an eigenvector will allow him to calculate the values of certain properties at different points. It's probably not an accurate way of solving time travel, but no one knows how to do that. Sorry, pure mathematicians, but this time, I think we weren't quite right. Movie producers tend to avoid what they, or the general public, might not understand, but sometimes they add in science and maths to sound clever or for a plot point. And sometimes they get it right, and sometimes they get it wrong. I may personally enjoy the sense of superiority I get from being able to explain or debunk some movie maths, but for the sake of keeping your friends, you might want to just shut up and watch the movie.